The book is called The Big White Lie. Its author says that for decades, the CIA has protected some of the world's biggest drug dealers, all supposedly in the interest of promoting democracy. Author Michael Levine was an undercover agent for the Drug Enforcement Agency for 25 years. You may also remember his 1990 best-selling book called The Drug Ward, The Deep Cover. Nice to have you back here. I, I mean, if this is true, the premise is so disturbing. I want to make sure that I understand it correctly, that our government, the U.S. government, particularly the CIA and the Pentagon, have supported and protected international drug barons in the name of fighting communism. Well, that's the pretext. Uh, let me put it very succinctly. Uh, what I'm saying is that while working undercover between the years of 1978 and, 19, and uh, 1982, posing as a mafia drug baron, half Hispanic, half Italian, I witnessed firsthand uh, the CIA commit high treason. I witnessed the sellout of the war on drugs. In uh, 1978, let me put it into historic uh, context. Uh, 1978, the demand for cocaine and later crack was skyrocketing. The need for a supply, a steady supply, uh, it, the South Americans could not keep up with that demand. And what they needed, in, in essence, was the general motors of cocaine. Well, in Bolivia, then uh, supplying up to 90% of the world's coca base, that General Motors of cocaine began to form. Uh, that General Motors of cocaine was comprised of uh, escaped Nazi fugitives, uh, Nazi war criminals like Klaus Barbie, Argentine mass murderers, gangsters from all over Europe, and drug dealers. I was assigned to create an undercover sting. I actually created a whole undercover mafia family. And we were assigned to stop that uh, General Motors of cocaine from happening. And we were absolutely successful. So then we, what happened? Then what happened, enter the CIA, they destroy the case. They take the, those elements of the Bolivian government, the Lydia Gala government that was helping. This was the last vestige in South America of anti-drug forces. They helped the drug dealers. They helped Klaus Barbie. Why? They helped. Well, the pretext was, uh, national security. Uh, if you read the, the Big White Lie, I think you'll agree with me that that's just a lie. Uh, that a lot of rogue CIA agents just made a fortune. Uh, there were a whole other, there's a whole array of other, it, it's an out of control agency. I think they're still out of control right now. There's no laws governing You think them, the CIA I, is still out of control? Oh, absolutely. If you read the newspaper events of what's going on in Haiti, uh, it's, it's a repeat of everything that happened. Uh, I think it's important to focus on a woman, probably uh, a woman who's unknown until this moment. Uh, she was the most powerful figure in the drug world in this South is America. Sonia. Sonia Atala. Okay. Throughout okay. South America, she was known as the queen of cocaine. She was part of this Bolivian government. Now, mind you, this is a Bolivian government that vowed, vowed specifically to invade the United States with cocaine. And that was the words of the prime minister. The vanguard of that invasion was Sonia Atala. Uh, this is a woman who had uh, a detachment of Nazi mercenaries assigned to her at her beck and call. She was a woman who uh, her house was a veritable torture chamber. That's where those members of the, Argenti of the uh, Bolivian government that helped us were tortured to death. She was uh, a woman who was so elusive that of all the figures in the Argentine government, her name never appeared in the DEA computer. I targeted her. Now, when the CIA stepped in and destroyed this case, I began to complain within house. I began to complain to the Justice Department. When that didn't work, I complained within the Drug Enforcement Administration. When that didn't work, I went to the media. Suddenly, I was put under investigation by the internal security forces of DEA. Uh, an attempt was made on my life that I describe in the book. Very clearly, I believe the CIA was behind that. I'm then force transferred back to the United States where I'm placed under an intensive investigation. I mean, all I wanted to do was win the drug war. Now, an incredible thing happens. I'm suddenly approached by a DEA agent. He comes in and he sits down in my office and he says, we want you to work in the most sensitive undercover case we have. It's called Operation Hun. We want you to work with a woman. Uh, she's a woman who sold drugs for the Bolivian government. She's probably the biggest informer we'll ever have. We want you to pose as her lover. We want you to pose as a business partner. The, the catch is that there's a Colombian killer who's after her. She owes them several million dollars and they have people all over the world hunting her. The target of the operation is going to be the same Bolivian government that the CIA put into power. I'm astounded. Uh, I, I accept the assignment and there began 
Operation Hun, uh, which is half the story in the big white lie. Yeah, and I should and say, I mean, with all these allegations that you're making, are you concerned about your own personal safety now? I, I, for years, uh, I never thought I'd write this book. You're talking about an agency that's uh, been governed by no laws, to, an agency to whom murder means absolutely nothing. Did the CIA know that you were in the process of writing this? And no, did they... Um, they didn't. Uh, what I, I do know is that I was put... Well, my son, uh, New York Police Sergeant Keith Levine, was murdered by... Uh, uh, drug crack addicts, addicts yeah. crack addicts. My my baby brother David was a drug addict for 19 years. He committed suicide. So you have a personal interest I, at here this point, well. at this point, I knew that before I died, I wanted history set straight. Uh, and this isn't an academic book. This is an undercover odyssey. This is the way yet? I lived it. Well, Any the book reaction? is first out now. Yeah, uh, but I, so no reaction yet from colleagues in the CIA. Oh, from from. Uh, first of all, let me say this: I'm not pointing a finger at the CIA in general because I belong to an agency called the National Security Alumni, which is mostly CIA agents. Uh, CIA agents who abhor what these rogue agents have gotten away with under the pretext of national security. Can we turn this it around is, now? Yeah, sure. We, we can still turn it around. Yeah, you've got, you, absolutely. You've got to follow the leadership of uh, people like Sheriff Jack DeMillo of uh, uh, Cape Cod, Massachusetts, uh, who's instituted a fight back program focusing on the drug user. Focusing on people here. Yes. Well, most interesting book. Again, it's called The Big White Lie. Mike Levine, thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. And we'll be back in just a moment. Center and highlighting noted authors, journalists, publishers, and editors. Your host is Marion Villamere, author, editor, book reviewer, and executive director of the Cape Cod Writers Center. It's a real pleasure to introduce to you today a man who is a 25-year veteran of the United States Drug Enforcement Admi Administration, who has worked undercover for most of that time, and who is now a writer. Our guest is Michael Levine, whose work was highlighted in the book Undercover by Donald Goddard, and who is presently a consultant, both here and abroad, on narcotics and undercover work. And he's also published three books. And I don't know how you did it, Michael, doing all the things that I read about in here and still producing books. And I understand there was even one that you produced while you were doing all this that didn't get done. Yeah, I, uh, I have to attribute uh, writing as one of my means of maintaining my sanity. Uh, I can Marianne. understand that. Uh, yeah. you, uh, for 25 years, I've, I adopted so many different identities. And actually, uh, you know, working undercover, posing as a drug dealer, mm -hmm. uh, particularly in deep cover cases where you go into another country. Yeah. And uh, it's literally your acting ability that keeps you alive.